All right, the uh, glue is dried, and these things worked out really nice. It's uh, lined up really good here. So this is going to be really easy to solder. Let's go ahead and put a little bit on the end here, the outside of each. We will pre-solder our iron. Oop, let's move down a little bit. There we go. <coughs> now, let's just make sure you stay put here. That's perfect. Here's that one soldered. Now, we'll put a little more solder on the end. Yep. There we go. Now, let's double check her with our gauge. Boy, that doesn't get any better than that. So let's go ahead and tin the rest of this thing up. Get up this side, or solder up this side. Oh shoot, look at what I just did. Alright, a little bit there, a little bit there. Soldered up. Now, we made a bit of a boo boo here. So let's get rid of that little bit of solder on top. There we go. We'll run this alongside to make sure. Let's check our gauge on her, make sure it goes through good. Here we are. Okay, now, final check. All right, here's your final check. Let's put on our wheels. Wanna see the turn out? Let's go the other way. Boy, that doesn't get any better than that. Now, you will hear a lot of things about DCC compliant turnouts. Well, this is one of the older Picos, code 100 rail, and what is it, SL, I forget now the number, but it's just a, a, a turnout, and I like them because they have lockable, lock, locking points here. You don't have to have a turnout machine, which on a module, I guess is a pretty good thing. 
and also they have insulation here and insulation here so you can wire these things up anywhere and not worry about shorting them out and these are also route selective so it's turned this way if, it, if the power is here if it's turned this way the power is going to be routed through here and if it's turned this way it turns that side off and the power will run through here which would work really good if you have DC you can do it this way and have an engine just sitting here and it's not going to affect it any I kind of like it so stick around for just a second and I'm going to talk to you about some things that I've found and and uh, and an issue I ran into as well all right a couple of things I want to talk about uh, this module here it's all ready to go now all I have to do is just do my wire on the back side and it's ready to go first thing I want to talk about is my sash, sash cam locks that I got for the size um, I found out the hard way do not buy these at Kent the ones that can't are flimsy as all get out and this one here it's already it's already goofing up it's it's I, I had this on the jig and I used it seven or eight times and she's falling apart so I'm going to order some more I found some at Lee Valley tools they look like they're pretty good quality and for a decent price I think they were seven dollars a piece at Lee Valley tools I think Home Depot also had some but they were fifteen dollars a piece so if I uh, spend fifteen dollars a piece on a on a sash cam lock that's thirty dollars a module just for the lock so that's that's not going to get it one other thing I want to talk to you about is this thing this oops this is an old horseshoe rasp uh, if you know any farriers any any blacksmiths horseshoers whatever you want to call them they always have tons of these around they're always replacing them um, I would recommend getting some you, you want to talk about something handy when you are sanding down your your cork and stuff this thing here does an excellent job sanding it down and being a used rasp it's not near as sharp as what it would be if it was new rasp if it was new rasp it would just it would just rip stuff apart but you've got the coarse side here and you've got the smooth side they are really handy if you can find one and a big long flat surface as well works great also works good for rasping down wood too if you need to so anyways i guess this is it um all i've got left to this module now is get it wired up and it's ready to go so i've got four more modules that i have to finish up and uh i probably won't video that because of the fact that it should be just repetition i'll probably come back when i uh have them all done and i'll set them all up together and we'll see how it works oh there is one more thing DCC concepts um, their company out of Australia they have a dowel an alignment dowel system they call it a baseboard dowel um, I saw it being used on Luke's Tones channel and I like I looked at those and I will I will put a picture here for you and I will also put a description in the in the comments for you but they, the ends of them are tapered so when they slide together they slide together tapered and they and they come together really nice if I had known about those before I started these instead of using wooden dowels I probably would have used those um, the way Luke Toen does it is he just puts the modules together and drills it through and then puts the things in and lines them up and does it I would go ahead and still use the jigs and do it that way but when I got when I got the other one installed in the module part then I would just put the jig back on clamp it up and let it dry and it would be perfect alignment every time I wish I had known about that ahead of time 
So just for your reference, if you decide you want to uh, build modules and use jigs like I do, that might be another option for you. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please hit the like button and, and share it for me and help get it out there. And subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you so much. Bye now.